Coca-Cola Bottling Company and the Boston Red Sox are proud to present Baseball in Boston, an inside story on the great American pastime. This film was photographed and produced by Dick Borden and features his unique camera gun on action scenes. Yours truly, Kurt Gowdy, will be your narrator. And the Boston Red Sox have extended all their facilities and cooperation in the production of this baseball film. All over the country during the summer, people are going to ballparks to enjoy the game which has become our national pastime. Wars have been fought and ended. We've had good times and bad. But for over 100 years, baseball has continued to give the fan the thrills and excitement which have made it a part of our way of life. Our ball game is here at Fenway Park in Boston, where plenty of ice-cold Coca-Cola is being brought in for the enjoyment of the fans. Long before game time, the park is being readied for today's game. Fenway Park is one of the country's best kept and cleanest baseball plants. Beneath the stand, boys bag peanuts, and as soon as our opposing managers have given the nod, the final lineup is printed in the day's program. You can't tell the players without a number. There'll be plenty of hot dogs on hand, too. Our fans have bought their tickets and programs. They're moving in now, and these folks come from all over New England. Meantime, the players are getting ready down in the clubhouses. Here's Billy Goodman putting on the traditional white uniform of the home team. Red Sox trainer Jack Fadden is working on pitcher Mal Parnell. That arm's a big investment for the Red Sox. Baseball's autographed by the stars give happiness to many youngsters, and Sam Mealy gladly obliges. Well, we've got a beautiful day for a game. And while you're there in person, thousands of other fans in every corner of New England will follow the game by radio. Television cameras will cover every play and press photographers will shoot the highlight action for the newspapers and wire services. The Western Union sports ticker keeps the nation informed of the progress of our game. And many fans like to be at a game early to watch the players warming up. Infield practice is appreciated too. And then there's a pre-game meeting of umpires and managers as the batting orders are exchanged. And here come the Red Sox onto the diamond and we're ready for baseball in Boston. These fans who come to Fenway Park root for the hometown Red Sox and have their individual favorites, too, such as Ted Williams, one of baseball's all-time greats. Ted will always be remembered by New England fans for providing some of the top thrills in the history of the Red Sox, the only club for which he played. He made a dramatic comeback after a hitch of flying jets in Korea, and this is the first time he swung a bat after his return. He had to wear leather gloves to protect his hands away from baseball for two years. Williams' batting style and swing have been copied by youngsters all over the world. He constantly studies the opposing pitchers to learn their motions. And the level swing and quick snap of the wrists have furnished the power for Williams to hit enough home runs to rank him fifth among the all-time home run hitters, despite five years in the service. Williams' lifetime average of 348 puts him right up near the top of the great hitters in history. Although especially known for his hitting, no one has been better than Ted in playing the tricky caroms off the left field wall at Fenway Park. Ted Williams' name will always be a legend to baseball fans, not only in New England, but everywhere baseball is talked and played. Another Boston favorite is outfielder Jimmy Pearsall, who has thrilled fans around the American League with his spectacular play. Pearsall has made almost unbelievable catches and throws since he came to the Red Sox in 1952. Folks in Waterbury, Connecticut are mighty proud of their hometown boy, who has become one of the bright stars of baseball. The only drives that Pearsall doesn't catch are those hit in the home run territory. Right now, he's more concerned over his teammate, Jackie Jensen, because Jim knows how it feels to slam into those fences and stands. 
In the field, at bat, or on the bases, Jim is a constant threat to the opposition. And this steal of home is typical of the verb with which Jimmy Pearsall plays baseball. Jackie Jensen is another member of one of baseball's finest outfields. The husky blonde from California possesses all the physical qualities that go to make up a real big leaguer. He has power at the plate. His outstanding speed and quick breaking ability won him top base stealing honors in the American League. Now it looks as if Jackie is an easy out here. Now watch this beautiful fadeaway slide. He's safe and you had to see that one to believe it. Jensen is quite a defensive player too. Just missing on a shoestring catch, Jackie will put his hustle and All-American football training to work and come up with a remarkable recovery. A good player never gives up on any hit ball. And this powerful throwing arm has cut down many a base runner. Another Fenway Park favorite is Billy Goodman, baseball's handyman who can and has played as many as five different positions in one season. Batting 300 is an old story to the skinny kid from North Carolina, who now boasts of a lifetime average of 310, the third best of the active players in the American League. One of the few major leaguers playing in his hometown is Harry Aganis of Boston University football fame. Aganis was one of the nation's finest quarterbacks in collegiate football. First baseman Aganis came to the Red Sox in 1954 after only one year's experience in professional baseball. Sammy White is one of the game's top young catchers. He's death on foul pop-ups, and his all-around ability have won him many fans. And sometimes a fellow knocks around this game and then finds his real home. The land of the bean and the cod certainly agreed with Grady Hatton, who played a brilliant third base for the Red Sox after coming to them in a trade. A mainstay of the pitching staff is Willard Nixon, who beat the Yankees four times in 1954. And here are Bill Henry, Russ Kemmer, Frank Sullivan, Truman Clevenger, and Tom Brewer, pitching hopes for the future. And as our Boston fans follow their favorite Red Sox players, well, naturally, they take time out during a ball game for that pause that refreshes with delicious ice-cold Coca-Cola. Fans like these, and like yourself, have made Coke the most asked for soft drink in all the world. The baseball season takes a break too. For the 1954 All-Star Game, let's take a quick jump into the wigwam of the Cleveland Indians on the shores of Lake Erie and look over some of the stars who comprise the who's who of baseball. It was All-Star Game number 10 for Ted Williams. Jim Pearsall was playing in his first. Leo DeRocher was one of the National League coaches. In October of this same season, he led his New York Giants to the World Championship in this same Cleveland ballpark. Roy Campanella, the Brooklyn Dodgers, and Ted Klazuski, Cincinnati's home run slugger. Brooklyn fans will take their Duke Snyder. Amazing Willie Mays of the New York Giants. This is one time his cap isn't falling off. Stan Musial, the National League's top lifetime hitter. A crowd of nearly 70,000 watched this spectacle. Started back in 1933 as a one-shot promotion, this annual game has become one of the top events on the American sporting calendar. The American League had scrappy Nelson Fox of the White Sox. Al Rosen, the popular third baseman of the Cleveland Indians. Chico Carrascal, Chicago's brilliant shortstop. He's a long way from his native Venezuela. And Larry Doby, the American League's top home run hitter for 1954. The American League had the edge going into this game with 12 victories against the National League's eight. And for the fans who like plenty of scoring and base hits, this all-star game was their dish. Here's Stan Musial connecting for the Nationals. And later, Minnie Minoso was cut down at third. But that didn't matter because the American League went on to win 11 of 10 in a game featured by two Al Rosen home runs and another by Larry Doby. And the 54 All-Star game will also be remembered by this rhubarb at home plate with the National League claiming a balk on pitcher Dean Stone. With the All-Star game history, let's get on back to Boston because we've got lots of baseball left in the second half of the season. The Red Sox are in for another homestand. It's a chance to watch some of the greatest stars in the game. 
No matter who you're rooting for, you always enjoy watching the performers who have that extra bit of class. And big crowds like this mean that one of baseball's most colorful rivalries is on. The Yankees are in Boston. Hey, there's Irv Norn, the Yankee outfielder. Keep your eyes on Bill Scourin. He's a real comer. Joe Collins, the Yankees' nifty first baseman. One of the fastest men to ever play in the big leagues is Mickey Mantle, who can beat you with a bunt or a home run. Now the Cleveland Indians are in town, led by the chief himself, manager Al Lopez. Bob Lemon, one of the top pitchers in the game today. He's a perennial 20-game winner. The American League batting champ of 1954, Bobby Avila. You all know this feller, first name's Bob, and his lightning fastball has slipped past many a 300 hitter for a third strike. Also hard hitting Al Rosen, Cleveland's third baseman. Al Smith flips down the sunglasses without losing his beat on a fly ball. Every team coming into Boston during the season brings named players. Bullet Bob Turley will be fireballing for the Yankees from now on. Baltimore fans hated to see him leave the Orioles. Detroit features hard-hitting third baseman Ray Boone. He loves it in Boston. He has a lifetime average of 400 at Fenway Park. Many Minoso of the White Sox are the real crowd pleaser. And Bill Tuttle of the Tigers, one of the finest defensive center fielders in the league. Another bright young star is Bob Finnegan of the Athletics. They'll like his hitting in Kansas City. And the Iron Man currently in the majors is Eddie Yost. He hasn't missed a game since 1949. Mickey Vernon with the Washington Senators. In the stands, the fans stir around in anticipation of the game and refresh with ice cold Coca-Cola. Baseball has a big heart, too. Wounded war veterans are invited guests. Thousands of New England youngsters take advantage of Red Sox hospitality each season. And the Red Sox have contributed heavily in the fight for little children inflicted with cancer through their helping hand to the Jimmy Fund. Now let's watch some typical action you would see at Fenway Park during a season and pick out some of the inside factors that make the game so enjoyable to a true fan. Constant communication takes place during a ball game from the dugout to the coaching boxes to the players. This base runner has received his instructions from his first base coach. Players must think ahead to the next play. With the runner on first base, a bunt might be called for. A good bunt which moves a man safely into scoring position sometimes is the key to the outcome of a game. Here's a well-executed sacrifice as the batter has given himself up. A team must have a good defense against the bunt also. Look at that third baseman charging in, and the pitcher has to dash off the mound to cover. In fact, every man on the defense is on the move in a bunt situation. And now the pitcher gambles for a force out at second and loses. This one play might turn the entire game around. For those who like their inside baseball, the double play is one of the game's most fascinating tactics. Here's shortstop Willie Miranda starting a double play, which will go from short to second to first. The double play combination of the shortstop and second baseman is the lifeline of the pitching staff, and very few teams have ever won the pennant without a slick pair around second base. To the offensive team, hitting into the double play kills many a rally. Watch the base runner go for the shortstop here and try to break up his throw to first base. On these takeout plays at second, some real football blocks can be thrown. Left-handed hitters with speed, such as Larry Doby, are hard men to double up. In making the double play, let's look at another takeout attempt. Notice the coordination and acrobatics required of an infielder to get his throw away. A good infielder is always in front of the ball. Despite a bobble, he'll still have a chance to get the runner. Infielders must have quick hands and reactions. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce the way it's supposed to. There's an old saying in baseball that anyone can play the good hops, but grabbing the bad bounces is the real test. A pitcher covering first base should come into the bag by running parallel to the foul line to avoid a collision with the base runner. The toughest play a shortstop must make 
is going to his right, deep in the hole, and still throwing the runner out at first base. This is the longest throw by an infielder during the course of a game. If he can consistently get his man on this play, he's a real big league shortstop. The umpires have helped make baseball a wonderful game. Sometimes the hometown fans don't quite agree with his decisions, but he's an impartial and well-trained observer who contributes honesty and hustle. He has to make hairline decisions and do it instantly. Some of his toughest decisions are at home plate, where many of the exciting plays take place. See how the home plate up takes his mask off and moves into position to have the correct angle on the play. He's always in a better position to see the action than anyone in the entire park. At first glance, this runner is out. But no, the catcher dropped the ball and the man is safe. By being right on top of the play, the umpire was able to spot the detail that caused him to change his call. A catcher receives quite a beating at home plate. He has to block the plate and absorb the tremendous impact from the sliding runner. Now let's watch that same play in slow motion. Yogi Berra cannot hold onto the ball, and it's opposing catcher Sammy White who's on the giving, not the receiving end this time. Little things win or lose baseball games. A bare hand pickup to save time. A long stretch by the first baseman saves a precious split second also. And a runner is out instead of safe. Now here's the play that caused a hot rhubarb. From far up in the stands, the runner looks out as he's tagged off the base. Once again, our faithful umpire was alert and had the best position to see the play. Now examine the play in slow motion. Watch the third baseman push the runner off the bag with his tag. All the arguing in the world isn't going to help. The umpire was in the right spot, honestly judged the play, and believes in his own decision. Now here's another one. It's an involved rundown play. How does it look from your grandstand seat? Safe or out? Slow motion gives you a better look. Note how the infielder has his glove down so the runner tags himself coming into the bag. Our fan who really knows the game always appreciates the extra effort by a player. Covering ground like this can save many a run during a season. And this turns out to be a close play thanks to some extra hustle. It would be a dull game if everything worked out perfectly in baseball. And this is why they put erasers on pencils. Despite a fall away slide, this runner is still out. The infielder took his throw from the catcher though, too far in front of the bag. When a fleet runner like Mickey Mantle takes off, everyone has to be on their toes. How do you call this play? Our slow motion camera gives you more time than the umpire had. The slide at first base is to save a valuable split second. If you're wondering about injuries, Mantle tripped over the bag, not the pitcher's foot, and everything was all right, especially for the Red Sox, since this was the last out of a Red Sox win over the Yankees. And our ball game is over. The fans have really seen some inside baseball. In case of rain tonight, this nylon tarp will assure a dry field tomorrow because there's always another tomorrow for baseball men. Brilliant young kids like left-handed bonus pitcher Frank Bauman must be signed. Heading a baseball organization of over 250 players, front office staffs and scouts is a big job and a former all-time great player and manager like Joe Cronin is just the man to fill it. Red Sox have 138 players now in the uniform of Uncle Sam. At Fort Jackson, South Carolina, Four future Sox stars are members of the famous Screaming Eagle division. Faye Thronberry, who played outfield for the Red Sox in 1952. Frank LaMonica, an infielder from California. Joe Tanner, a shortstop from the University of Texas. And Haywood Sullivan, an All-American football quarterback of Florida and quite a catching prospect. These boys are just like hundreds of other young fellows. 
They're trying to do as good a job for Uncle Sam as they've done on the ball field. Most of them will take up their baseball careers again when they've completed their stretch in the service. Some of them will come out and move into the major leagues. The majority will go back to the minors and get the experience to work their way up. These sights must be familiar to many of you ex-GIs. Here at Fort Jackson, these young stars of the future have developed into good soldiers. There is a depth in firing mortars as they are in throwing a baseball. This is even hotter than an argument at home plate. And these 105 millimeter howitzers are just like the siege gun hitters in the majors. And the boys can handle the 75 millimeter recoilless rifle too. It's not all work for our Red Sox Army lads though, there's time for worship. And time to relax, to take that refreshing break for those bull sessions where naturally baseball is the topic of conversation as these young hopefuls look forward to the day when they'll be wearing this emblem. Well, that's our Boston baseball story. It's a story which has a new addition every summer, but always a different script. Baseball in Boston means excitement, color, drama. Baseball fans never tire of seeing and talking about the game they love. The stars of today hold the spotlight, but the youngsters are on their way up to replace them in the future. The Boston Red Sox and who bottles delicious Coca-Cola hope you've enjoyed this inside story. We thank you for your loyalty to baseball, to the Red Sox, and to Coca-Cola, the unique product that has become as much a part of American life as baseball itself. And remember, whether you're a player in the clubhouse or a fan in the stands, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>